What is up my fellow creamers and anabolic friends? We just reached 10k subs because of the Gregor rhythm. And from Exercise for Cheat Meals, Nick Kennedy. He also has a Masters of Exercise Physiology. He knows what he's talking about. Please subscribe to his channel and check out all the amazing recipes he provides. And you guys have been asking for a full day of eating for a while now. And I've only done a full day of eating when I ate five protein ice creams that Greg challenged to. So today, we will be trying five, six different recipes from the Power 13 cookbook. My name is Nick, I have my master's in exercise physiology and I make anabolic recipes, but I also do anything else fitness related. So if you're into that kind of thing, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. If you aren't already convinced to start eating the anabolic diet, I think by the end of the day, you will. But I'm going to let you know, are the instructions easy to follow? How quick is it actually to make it? Was I full, satisfied, was everything good? If you're ready for exercise for cheat meals, first full day of eating, then let's get into it. Got our breakfast ready to go. Johnny Shreve has that grilled cheese omelet sandwich and Nutty Foodie Fitness has the Nutty Carrot Cake Muffins. Before we get into the actual taste testing, I wanna go over the pros and cons of the recipes themselves from the book. We will start with the muffins. So first, it says the prep time is two minutes. I think the only thing <laughs> that can be prepped in two minutes is like actually cutting a can of like Chef Boyardee up and pouring it into a bowl because you have to shave the carrots and you have to do some other things and it's not that long at all. It's like 15 minutes, but two minutes is a little bit misleading. 15 minutes really isn't anything and it was literally as simple as pie. Secondly, it's supposed to make four muffins. I got six. I followed the recipe directly to what it said besides putting regular flour instead of coconut flour, which it says that that's an alternate, and it doesn't say to vary the amounts. More food, even if it's not actually more volume, looks like more volume, makes your brain think that, makes your stomach think that, and you feel fuller. The third thing is it took me about 30 minutes in the oven compared to the original time that it said. Every oven is different, just make sure that you're checking on it and don't overdo it. Now, without a doubt, in my opinion, the icing needs to be corrected. There's more dry ingredients than wet ingredients and there was no mixture whatsoever. There was no actual frosting, icing, whatever you wanna call it. What I did was I added 25 grams more of the wet ingredients and then I also added one gram of vanilla. If you showed me this in a bowl, I couldn't tell that it's not peanut butter. Like it looks exactly like peanut butter. Oh, I also added five grams of urethritol. On to the pros. The first is that the instructions are super simple to go through. Everything is laid out perfectly. I didn't have any questions besides one substitute. There's a toffee extract that she uses and I called her and I asked her and she actually said that you can use vanilla extract. And I'm also going to be measuring the calories and this one was literally 530 calories in my phone when I logged it. In the book it says 532 calories. So literally bang on with the calories. And you get 14 grams of fat, 63, let's say 63 carb, 13 and a half fiber, and 50 grams of protein. As far as the omelet sandwich goes, very simple to follow, very easy instructions. I don't know if it's like a bodybuilder thing or what, but literally, this is like a Greg recipe in my opinion. It was like three steps, four steps, bang, 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 you're ready to eat. Really no complaints about this, besides the actual calorie tracking is a little confusing because it says two slices of bread up to 90 calories a slice, and it also says cheese up to 60 calories a slice. And when you add up the calories together, it already comes to about 300 calories when it says the total calories is 330. And that's not including several other ingredients that are also in this recipe. Make sure you're tracking your calories. That's the most important thing. Oh, and same thing with the Nutty Foodie Fitness with the peanut butter. It says three tablespoons or 16 grams. And on the label, it says two tablespoons is 13 grams. So when you're comparing that and you think, 
think, okay, three tablespoons, you're actually going to be putting an extra whatever, four or five grams into your mixture, which in baking can or can't make a difference. I haven't really experimented with baking enough, but from what I understand, a few grams can throw the recipe off. So I would say always have a food scale. They cost like $20, especially the point scales. They are so freaking good and it's way better than measuring with like teaspoons and tablespoons in my opinion. So we're gonna start with the savory before the sweet and let's go with Johnny's omelet sandwich. There are times when simple is perfect and this is super simple and it's perfect. You have all the layers that you want here. Some people will ask if you should use, you know, if you could skip the butter on the outside. I would say absolutely not. It really adds a whole robust flavor to it. Make it how it's supposed to be because I think the flavor boost that the butter or margarine or whatever would give is so much more than taking out the few calories that it adds. I'm definitely gonna judge this based on what it's supposed to be and it's called a cheesy omelet sandwich and that's exactly what it is and it tastes good. It tastes very good. And I could easily fit two of these into my breakfast. And I'm usually not that hungry for breakfast. Some people are, some people aren't. So two of these would do me just right until my next meal or snack, whatever the case may be. So I would give this, you know, for what it is, it's like a nine and a half out of 10, you know? I can't say like, oh, you, you would get this at the five star restaurant, but it's very freaking good and it's simple and it's 10 minutes in and out of the kitchen. I'm gonna try the muffins without any frosting on them first. The green one, I didn't add any artificial sweeteners. The blue one, I did add artificial sweetener. I added about 10 grams to what I thought was half, but it ended up being four more muffins. So I'm gonna tell you if there's any taste difference between the two and how they taste in general. Now these are very soft and very moist, but I almost feel like they could use just a little bit more flour before I bite into them because they're almost still a little bit wet, but they have a very crispy top. All right, so right off the bat, they're definitely a little bit too wet. I would probably add a little bit more flour, but five grams of flour is like an extra 20, 25 calories. And if it makes it more cakey, then it's worth it. Now the taste is good. I, I do like it a little bit more sweet, so I'm hoping that this one's a little bit more sweet, but that's all preference. It definitely has a muffin-like consistency, but it's like, You can hear how moist it is. So I would just add a little bit more flour. It's not gonna dry it out. Just gonna make it more cakey, but it still tastes great. So regardless, as far as taste goes, it's bang on. Don't they know I'm recording? And we're back. Before I taste this frosting, I'm gonna taste Sprite Zero Ginger for the first time and let you know if it's worth it because more diet sodas than last time and more variety is always a good thing. So Sprite Zero is one of my favorite diet sodas in the first place. This ginger flavor is very, very subtle and just adds to the flavor of the Sprite. So I would 100% recommend if you see the Sprite Zero ginger in your store, you should check it out. Okay, now let's try this frosting by itself. I think with Greek yogurt and trying to make frosting, you're always gonna have a little bit of a tang. It's almost impossible to get rid of. However, I could eat this from the bowl, so it's still very good. But if you don't like Greek yogurt, you're not gonna like this just because of the tanginess. Once again, it's all a taste preference. Since that one doesn't have the added sugar, I really like the frosting on top because it adds that extra sweetness to it. So I think I'm gonna like this one even more because it's gonna be even more sweet. This is bang on. I do have to take a little bit of the number rating away because of the texture. I mean, it's not the same texture as like a muffin is. That's not a hard fix and the taste is there. So I'm gonna give this a seven out of 10. I'm sure if I made this again, it would be an eight or an eight and a half out of 10. The frosting on its own though, you're gonna get the tang from the Greek yogurt, but it is very good for a Greek yogurt frosting. I'm gonna give that an eight on 10 as well. I have to walk over to Aldi, get the rest of the ingredients. Yeah, by the way, this is a very expensive day. So if you could just hit that like button for me, that would be tremendous. It takes a lot of work just to set these up and a lot of recording and a lot of editing to actually get these videos uploaded onto YouTube and subscribe if you haven't already. It's snack time.
So let's start out with I am dumb. Let me tell you why. I went to the store and I was, it was like 11.30, closed at 12, had to get all this crap. I don't know, it was a new jewel. I'd never been to that store. And I'm rushing through trying to get everything. I get artichoke carts. Cool, all good. I get home. Make the recipe. These artichoke carts are mixed with olive oil or sunflower oil. And there's 400 more calories in the can than the one that's just in like salty water or whatever to keep it, you know, fresh or whatever. So make sure you pay attention to what you're looking at. I was in a hurry, but even I still messed up and didn't get the right thing. What I ended up doing is kind of like what uh, Greg does with his meat to make it less fat. When I dumped it out and drained it, I ran it through water and I squeezed out as much of that oil and everything as I could. It's still gonna have that flavor in it, but it is completely my fault that this is a little bit higher calorie. I also couldn't get my hands on fat-free cream cheese, or no, I'm sorry, fat-free mozzarella cheese. So instead I went with the 80 calorie per serving versus 35. So that also made about a 200 calorie difference. So just realize if you're gonna sub something completely for another thing, it could add hundreds of calories and not even knowing it. Just make sure you're conscious of those things and it's just a learning experience for both me and you. Growing up, I would always get spinach artichoke dip if I could. It was so delicious. I will say, as far as the prep time, he has it at five minutes. If I would have already had pre-shredded Parmesan and pre-shredded mozzarella, it took me about 25 minutes to prep, then I would have been able to just throw it in there and I probably would have been done in 15 minutes. I think 10 is like, you literally have made it a bunch of times before and you can make it right away. So a five minute prep is a little bit short to me. I would just add to where it says garlic to make sure that we say that it's minced just because People will think cloves and literally just throw the cloves right in without mincing it. I am ready to eat. The only thing I didn't have was the Parmesan herb seasoning. Everything else I had and I tasted just a little bit before it went in because it kind of spilled on the side and it was perfect. I also cut up some fresh vegetables and I made some tortilla chips from uh, corn tortillas. A half serving is 400 calories. You know, a 10 by eight dish, 400 calories for half this is absolutely in Sane. If I had double the chips, I can eat this as a meal and it would be tremendous. It's a huge portion size. If I would have had all the proper ingredients, this would be an 800 calorie dish for the whole thing. 20 fat, 52 carb, 20 fiber, which is super dope. I wouldn't have expected all the fiber, but the artichokes and everything, of course. And then 99 grams of protein, round up, it's 99.3, so 100 grams of protein. Absolutely unreal and it smells super good so i'm expecting it to taste even better i need to wash this down and i also just bought pepsi mango i had one in the plastic but i want to see how it is fresh i expected for this to be good with like a sprite type of soda like a light clear type of soda thought this would be trash this is actually pretty damn good it tastes a lot like mango and not a lot like pepsi but you get that subtle hit of pepsi like as you're swallowing it's weird but it's good i think some people are going to absolutely hate this and some people are going to absolutely love it i pretty much love it i think it's great i'm glad i bought a 12 pack and i don't have to throw the rest out now if you find them in your store you should definitely pick them up anyways i did message will yesterday because I was like, instead of having to let the spinach drain, can I just buy fresh spinach? He said that should be no problem. And it looks like it worked out very well. I haven't had spinach artichoke dip in probably four or five years. What I do remember is the ones that I used to get were a little more cheesy and less spinachy. Obviously though, this is supposed to be at least an eight out of 10 and we're trying to save on as many calories as we can. He could have added a couple more ounces of fat-free treat cheese if he wanted to, but I love cheese, so that could just be me. Everyone has their own preferences. You could put extra, extra cheese on a pizza, and I will still say there could be more cheese on there. Overall, taste is absolutely excellent. The tortilla chips are the best thing to dip it with, obviously, but if I had to choose from the vegetables, I think that the red pepper tastes super good with it. I don't really like the carrot with it at all. And the celery is okay. I'm gonna finish this off with both the tortilla chips and the red pepper, and I will see you back after I go work out. Oh, and I stuck this under the broiler for about a minute to get the cheese extra brown and nice on the top. 
Highly recommend, pro tip. I am extremely excited to get back from the workout because now it is time to have ice cream. Almost every single post-workout, I have ice cream. But just like any typical day, there's some portion of the day where I get caught off guard by something that takes longer than expected and there's some time in between eating. Don't stress about it, it's okay. That's no problem at all. But we are on our third meal of the day and today we are making, or for this meal, we are making peanut butter cookie dough ice cream by none other than the Iron Musket. So let's go through that fast forward motion. Let me just say, I haven't ate this in forever, the shell, and I love it. So I'm super stoked for this. I don't want Musket to get mad at me that I didn't eat this right away, so we're gonna try this right out of the gate. The cookie dough is perfect consistency. You definitely don't have to worry about not having a peanut butter flavor in the shake. It is so peanut buttery. Nutty Foodie Fitness, you would love this one. The ice chunks are super duper small. Like if there's any, they're not actually chewable. You just like feel them and it's almost like a, a good texture in my opinion. I do wish I could have more of that shell topping, but 190 calories for 32 grams. So I understand the amount that he used. If you haven't tried a protein ice cream yet, buy a damn Ninja. The $100 is worth it, and if you have a Ninja, get the supplies, you have them forever. There's nothing like a protein ice cream. Whether it's a milkshake style, blizzard style, doesn't matter. This is so good. I look forward to my post-workout shake every single day. This one stands right next to mine. Obviously, I'm biased. I'm always gonna say mine's better. He's always gonna say his is better, and that's very respectable. You always wanna think that you're the best at something. However, this literally can stand right next to mine. This one's a little bit thicker. Mine's a little bit thinner. Mine has a strong peanut butter taste, but also has a good amount of a white chocolate taste, while his is just straight peanut buttery, with the cookie dough having a very cookie dough-like. God damn it. With the cookie dough having a very cookie dough-like texture, everything with the shell. I added a little bit of peanut butter on top because I did get confused. The one thing I did get confused about in the instructions, he said 10 grams Reese's peanut butter, peanut butter chocolate shell topping. I thought it was 10 grams of shell topping and 10 grams of peanut butter. So I did add a few extra calories to this, but regardless, this is a straight banger. If you want a protein ice cream, you can definitely go to the book and be like, all right, do I want this kind of peanut butter one today or this kind of peanut butter one? Do I want more of a milkshake or do I want more of like a creamier ice cream? Let me try the cookie dough on its own. The cookie dough on its own isn't very peanut butter-like and it doesn't taste like a peanut butter cookie dough or like a chocolate cookie dough. It's kind of hard to describe, but I wouldn't give it like a typical dough type of taste. But the morsels that are in it, which I still hate you, musket, for making me buy this, for legitimately five grams. Like this whole thing has hundreds of grams in it. Thank you for reminding me. These are going straight into the trash because I can't have those in the house because they're just gonna do nothing but sit and get eaten eventually. But the morsels really help this out if you're gonna make this on a consistent basis because you get that actual peanut butter taste in the peanut butter dough. And you can't tell the difference when everything's mixed in. This cookie dough isn't meant to be separate. When I made my cookie dough, it was meant to be eaten on its own and taste like cookie dough. This is thrown in here, and for the first, I don't know, six, seven balls that I had, I could not tell the difference that it tasted not as much peanut butter-like because the ice cream is so peanut buttery. So I think it complements each other very very well. Prep time on this says 10 minutes and it says ready in 10 minutes. With everything on the table already, which is how I count my prep time, it actually took me 15. So it, that one is very close. I would say just a little bit more. I'm really good at ice creams though. So I could really whip everything really quickly because this is what I do every day. And that's why I'm the cream king. I just literally every day I do this. So it's faster for me. It might take you up to 20 minutes, but once you get the hang of doing ice creams, you do them a, a lot faster. But 15 minutes for this quality of cream is 1000% worth it. He does say on one of the mixes to make sure that if any, if everything doesn't look blended, mix it halfway through the blend. And I think that's crucial. If I didn't do that, I would have a lot of ice chunks. I would have a lot of mix, mix, mitch, miss matching colors and the flavor would be different in different parts of the ice cream. I think that mix in between is crucial. And I would definitely highly recommend you try this uh, protein ice cream out 
just in general. Macros on this, also tremendous. 481 calories, 20 grams of fat, 46 carb, 14 fiber, and 46 protein. Almost a gram of protein for every 10 calories. That's kind of what I want in a uh, ice cream, but I wouldn't even care if it was a little bit less when you also have cookie dough in it as well. For the amount of toppings slash mixins that you have and the amount of real peanut butter taste that you get with it, 481 calories, it's worth every single calorie. So I'm gonna give this, a, this is like a solid 9.2 out of 10. Like I would eat this any day of the week. Also speaking to me not eating for six hours, I am fully satisfied. I was starving after a workout and it's been six hours and I worked out, but I have been fully satiated. That spinach artichoke with all the fiber in it and the amount that you get, no complaints here all day. I've enjoyed every single meal so far and I cannot wait to show you guys how to make the buffalo chicken. First, we're gonna try it the way that I wanted to try it, the old fashioned way or the way that I originally intended it to be. Look how juicy it still is inside of there. Unreal. The good thing about this is you get an even coating of buffalo sauce. You don't get like a little bit of buffalo here, a lot of buffalo there, no buffalo there. And it's not dripping all over you. The one thing that's not as good is that you don't get the same crunch. At least for the first one, I do like differentiating the buffalo from the ranch because as you bite into it, you get all of the flavors layer by layer. I don't know what more you could expect out of a buffalo chicken ranch besides having more ranch on it. At this point, I probably would have added a little bit more. However, if you add a little bit more, we're talking minimal calories. Now let's move on with the combined top. Just as juicy here. And you could hear that outside still has the crunch. I do like the crunch a lot, but I honestly think I like the more even layer of sauce more than having the crunch. I'm not even kidding you. Both of them are like a nine out of 10. Like this is what I was most proud of putting in the book. I've done a lot of good creams. I haven't really done a lot of chicken sandwiches besides the McChicken. So I really wanted to put a good chicken sandwich in there. I think I accomplished that here. Now the one discrepancy is Greg has his own system, which I understand he's put out two books now on how he counts calories. He has it listed in here at 559 calories per chicken. And my calories that I, I just did it right now, I weighed everything out after, see how much I used, and then made the macros based on that. 436 calories, 46 protein, 48 carb, eight fat, that's killer. To be honest, even for me, making room and having a lot of calories eat every day, I probably wouldn't make this at 559 calories. So me and Greg are talking right now. I do wanna get the calories adjusted because it is more like 440 with over 45 grams of protein, 40, you know, we're at 46 grams of protein, which are great on a protein to calorie scale. I like to try to be as accurate as possible with calories. That's why with all my attempts, I kept weighing everything out after to see what I used because I want to give you guys the best tools to lose weight. So if I don't have the calories right and you're 100 or 150 off, whatever, that can keep you from losing an extra pound a month or whatever the case may be. And I'm not trying to do that. I would like to try to be as accurate as possible. And there's a couple instructions in there that I do want to clear up as well. We're definitely going to get it cleaned up in the next few days. And I just highly recommend in the meantime that you definitely make this. You will not be disappointed, even though it does take a little bit more work. Yes, it is the next day, but before we get into why it's the next day, please let me know in the comment section if you wanna see a part two. I think everyone's recipes should be shown on the channel so you can get a preview of what each person offers. Also, if you see these dishes, this takes a lot of work, please like the video. But we are here now with Simon Miller's anabolic fish and chips. Prep time is accurate, 10 minutes, ready in 40 minutes. So if you actually follow the instructions, it would take about an hour to get everything done. So again, prep time is something that can be worked on, but is not as important as the overall flavor of the meals themselves. Also, super easy to throw together, no problems with that. But when it comes down to the calories, anything that's breaded seems to have a big variance in calorie count from mine to his. So again, I measured everything before I did it and measured everything after I did it and what I had left over. And for this meal, my total calorie count is 500 calories, 64 protein, 41 carbs, and seven and a half fat. Whereas in here, it counts it as 633 calories, eight and a half fat, 47 and a half carb, and 89 protein. And I am a little kid at heart, and I've always eaten my fish with cocktail sauce. 
So I made up my own cocktail sauce real quick, but I will try it on its own as well. The very interesting part of this dish is that part of the dry station is protein powder. And I've never used protein powder as a breading ingredient. And you can't let it sit for too long. If you let it sit, it's not gonna hold its, I don't know, shape or whatever. So make sure that you get that pan heating right away because I let it sit for about 15 minutes and the mixture really started to get too soggy and a lot of the actual breading stuck to the plate. So just make sure you have everything ready to go and start cooking right away. Personally, myself, I should have put more salt and pepper on there. I didn't but that's something I can change in the next go around. The fish takes, tastes excellent. It's got a nice crisp to it on the outside, nice brown breading. The only thing I do, need to do to enhance the flavor is a little more salt and pepper. But normally I don't eat it on its own anyway. I like dipping pretty much anything that I eat. With the cocktail sauce, game over for me. Cocktail sauce is super low calorie. For me, being a huge condiment person, this just bubbles it up. To save on time, if you have an air fryer, I would make your fries in the air fryer while you prep the fish, because the fish doesn't take that long to prep. Let's see, we got a nice crunch. Decent. I mean, when you compare these to fully fried, these would probably be a seven and a half out of 10, but it's hard to get it up into the nines with a fry without frying it, especially with how simple these fries were to make. Just really be sure not to overcook your fish because fish could get dry super quickly. If you're just gonna do the fish, Super simple, super quick. So if I were to do anything, I would probably meal prep the fries because once the fries are cooked, you can easily reheat them back in the air fryer and in about four minutes, five minutes, they're as good as new. And you don't have to spend that extra amount of time with your air fryer and the fries themselves. For 500 calories, that's an absolutely stunning meal, especially when you get to eat fries, when most people probably think that they can't eat fries on a diet. Oh, and it's the next day because I stay up super late and my roommate doesn't. So he was sleeping and I did not want to wake him up to record at three in the morning. I'm sure you're wondering overall, should you buy the cookbook? I understand that you may think I'm biased because I'm in the cookbook, but as you can see throughout this whole video, I have told you the good and the bad of both. So let's go over the bad first. There's two main things with the bad and one is the prep time, which I don't think is accurate. However, it's not a ridiculous prep time. It doesn't tell you five minutes and it took me 55 minutes. It's like it says two minutes and it took me 15. So to me, it's not that big of a difference and something that's like a make or break, especially when we can go in and edit those things. And two is the actual calorie count and everything that isn't a breaded good, at least from what I've done, because I went through everything and I went through ingredient by ingredient and compared the macros to each other. So I really did a deep dive. And the only time it's really made a big difference and change is when there's a breading involved, which was my recipe and which was Simon's recipe. Again, that is something that we can change in the cookbook and just do an updated version once we get the actual calories figured out. And if anything, you're actually eating less calories than you think, which most people underestimate and not overestimate. But I do want you to go into it thinking that you can have this meal and fit it into your macros instead of you being like, oh, that's 560 calories. Ah, I can't do that, I can't fit it in. Now for the good things. One, the instructions are almost perfected. The only instructions that I wanna change a little bit are the ones that are on my chicken sandwich. However, every single one of them that wasn't mine, I was able to go through, read it, and use those steps to create the sandwich or the meal itself and not have any trouble and be like, wait, what does this say? What does this mean? And be confused. It was very straightforward. And after I got through the instructions and actually was eating the meal, it was good, if not great. Every single one of them. I mean, today, I ate carrot cake muffins, omelet breakfast sandwich, spinach artichoke dip, peanut butter cookie dough ice cream, a buffalo chicken sandwich, and fish and chips or fish and fries. And I'm at my maintenance calories, which is 3000 calories. I got to eat all this stuff while maintaining my calories and the variety is so plentiful and so great at the same time. On that same token, I was fully satisfied, if not stuffed yesterday. These are all meals that will also keep you satiated and not make you feel like you wanna go back and eat again right afterwards. So my overall conclusion would be it's 1000% worth it. The reason I say that is for all the reasons above and it's because it's almost like instead of going to 
a Chinese restaurant or an Italian restaurant or a Greek restaurant, you're going to a buffet with a bunch of different minds that come from a bunch of different cultures all over the world, all with their own ideas and recipes that all combine into one book. I think that is a very unique perspective. And for a dollar fifty after the discount code, E4 CM15. You're talking about, you know, 67 whatever dollars for the actual book itself. $1.50 a recipe for a vast variety of different recipes is worth every penny in my opinion. If you want to see a part two, comment below. Any questions, also comment below. And until next time, I will see you in that next one. Do see.